Parliamentary Assembly of NATO urges allowing Ukraine to strike targets in Russian territory. NATO members should increase military assistance to Kyiv and lift existing restrictions on the use of Western weapons against military targets in Russian territory, the alliance's parliamentary assembly declared. The declaration was approved by a majority of over 200 representatives from all 32 allied countries. Mikhail Shteba, chairman of the assembly, reiterated the importance of quickly supplying Ukraine with air defense systems and other military equipment. They need our help. Not in two years, not in two months, not even in two weeks. The message quotes Shteba. They need it now. We must speed up and step up. Give Ukraine everything it needs. He added that Ukraine can only defend itself if it can strike Russian supply lines and military bases near its borders. It is time to recognize this reality and let Ukraine do what it must. Shteba continues, NATO will be significantly weakened, losing credibility, if we continue assisting with half measures. The Ukrainian delegation stated that restrictions on strikes against military targets in Russia hinder the Kyiv's efforts to repel the Russian offensive in Kharkiv Oblast. Russian terror must be stopped. Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov said in a video address, To do this, we need your determination. We need more anti-aircraft weapons, more long-range capabilities for our soldiers. I ask you to contribute to the adoption of these decisions as much as possible. Earlier, NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has called on the alliance's members to ease the prohibition on using weapons they supply to Ukraine to strike military targets in Russia. Stoltenberg made the remark in an interview with Britain's Economist magazine. It came as Russia intensifies its offensive in the eastern Ukrainian region of Kharkiv. There are growing calls to lift the restrictions that limit Ukraine's use of Western-supplied weapons to within its territory. But the administration of US President Joe Biden is cautious about taking such a step. The United States is the largest army provider to Ukraine. Stoltenberg said that to deny Ukraine the possibility of using Western-provided weapons against legitimate military targets on Russian territory makes it very hard for Ukrainians to defend themselves. The NATO chief also said Ukraine has the right to defend themselves and that includes striking targets on Russian territory. China fueling war in Europe by helping Russia NATO Secretary General NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg accused Beijing of exacerbating the ongoing war in Ukraine by supporting Russia, claiming that by voicing support for Moscow, China was prolonging the war. China says it wants to maintain good relations with the West. At the same time, however, Beijing is fueling the war in Europe. You can't have it both ways. Stoltenberg stated in an interview with the German newspaper Welt am Sonntag, Highlighting the importance of China's support for Russia, Stoltenberg said there was an increase in the sale of machine parts, microelectronics and other technologies essential for Russia's military industry. Despite the tensions, Stoltenberg made it clear that NATO had no plans to deploy troops to Ukraine or extend the alliance's air defense umbrella to the country. NATO will not be a part of the conflict, he reaffirmed. Stoltenberg also called on NATO member countries to enhance their support for Ukraine, emphasizing the urgent need for more weapons and ammunition, including air defense systems and long-range weapons. It is not too late for Ukraine to win. We need to send more weapons and ammunition to Ukraine, he urged. He stressed the need for the Allies to restore their military supplies and increase the production of weapons and ammunition. If Putin gets what he wants in Ukraine, there will be no permanent security in Europe and the world as a whole will become more unstable. We must deter Russia from further aggression. A policy of appeasement towards Putin will not work, added Stoltenberg. Recently, British Defence Secretary Grant Shapps said that Beijing preparing to send lethal aid to Russia for use in the war against Ukraine. I can reveal that we have evidence that Russia and China are collaborating on combat equipment for use in Ukraine, Shaps told. Putin decisively took up purges in his Ministry of Defense. The New York Times explained reasons. Complaints of incompetence and corruption in the highest echelons of the Russian military have haunted Vladimir Putin since the start of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The need for change became clear when Russian troops failed in the vicinity of Kyiv, near Kharkov, and also after the march of Prigozhin's mercenaries to Moscow. 
The New York Times writes that Putin has all this time avoided any serious public steps that could be perceived as confirmation of criticism. Now that the battlefield crisis appears to be behind him and Prigozhin is dead, the Russian president has decided to act, replacing the defense minister for the first time in more than 10 years and making a series of corruption arrests among the ministry's top officials. Experts say Putin's latest moves likely indicate he has become more confident in his military prospects in Ukraine and in his political power. Russian troops are making progress in Ukraine, seizing territory around Kharkov and the Donbass, while Ukraine struggles with delays in US aid and shortages of ammunition and personnel. Senior officials in the Kremlin are optimistic. They likely view the military situation as stable enough to punish some of the military leadership for the past failures, says Michael Kaufman, an expert on the Russian military and a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Demand for change at the top of the Russian military has been building since the early days of the invasion. When stories spread of Russian soldiers going to war without proper food or equipment and losing their lives to incompetent military leaders, anger peaked after the aborted uprising led by Prigozhin, which US officials said was likely state-sanctioned murder. It was the leader of the Wagner who became the litmus test that forced the Russian authorities to think about corruption. The Russian leader appears to be turning against the very officials Prigozhin attacked. The first harbinger of change was the arrest of Timur Ivanov, Shoigu's protege and deputy defense minister, who was accused of accepting a large bribe. He denies any wrongdoing. Previously, Ivanov attracted the attention of Alexei Navalny's anti-corruption foundation due to his luxurious lifestyle. The Kremlin then announced that it had replaced Shoigu with Andriy Belusov and Shoigu was transferred to the Russian Security Council where he has access to the president but no control over money. Belusov has no military experience but boasts a relatively clean image and a clean government career. Maria Enkvist Deputy Head of Russia and Eurasia Research at the Swedish Defense Research Agency noted that if Putin wants to win the war, corruption is not the way to go. At the same time, she called high-level corruption in Russia a feature, not a mistake.